Hello friends. Every time I take somebody out in the woods to show them how to use punkwood, they always seem to leave amazed by the powers of this material. So today I would like to do a crash course with you and show you not everything there is to know, but a lot that there is to know about this almost magical fire starting material. Hi friends, my name is Kenton Whitman and together with my family, we aim to share wilderness skills, mindfulness practices, wild edible plants, family adventures, and skills that break you free from the limits of civilized life. Join us by subscribing to our channel and joining our YouTube family. To begin getting to know punkwood, we first have to look for these upright snags. These are trees that have broken off part way up their length and the standing wood is very prone to rot. Logs down on their sides can also contain punkwood, but in general that punkwood is going to be more wet and less useful than any you would find in standing snags. This rot is produced by different fungi, and the type of fungi combined with the species of the tree gives us a whole host of different fire starting powers. Today we're going to learn about the two main types, how to recognize them, and how to use them effectively. This is white rot, which I'm going to be calling soft punkwood. You can see it has a sort of flaky appearance and its texture when you hold it is a little bit like styrofoam, very soft and squishy. The power of soft punkwood is that it starts up very, very easily, even with a flint and steel. And I'll show you how to do that. It also holds its little ember very, very well. Sometimes you can bury it in dirt or in snow, which I'll show you. The disadvantage is that it burns very fast compared to other punkwoods and relatively cool compared to other punkwoods. So you don't get as much fire power <laughs> out of these. Now you're apt to get very frustrated with punkwood if you try to think of it only in these two categories that I'm going to give today. Punkwood is very nuanced and to get good at it, you have to practice with it. Take this white rot or soft punkwood snag that we're looking at here. It's going to have all kinds of different grades of punkwood in it. Some is very, very soft like this. When you have stuff that's this soft, it's going to start up easily. It's going to burn quickly and burn cool. You're going to find some that's a little bit harder. That stuff is going to be a little bit more difficult to catch onto an ember and it's also going to burn slower and hotter. Often you'll have this outer layer here. This is kind of the inner bark that has been infected, I do believe. And that is going to act almost like the brown rot or the hard punkwood that we'll talk about later. So each of these different grades of punkwood even in one snag here, are going to hold a lot of different capabilities. Again, it's really important to start to practice with it so you can tell it by feel and by sight. There's a very special material you can find in most white rot or soft punkwood snags, and that is this white punkwood powder. This is usually created by insects that are just in there digging around, making tunnels, and making these piles of powder. And this powder is exceedingly easy to catch with the tiniest spark from a ferro rod, or even, as you can see here, from flint and steel. Now, it's not enough just to start up some of that powder. We need to know how to transfer the ember and this is something that you should be practicing regardless with your fire making practice and skills is learning to transfer embers. This is basic, basic stuff that is really, really important. 
yet a lot of people are not proficient at it. Once you're able to transfer embers, whether you're doing friction fire and creating an ember with a hand drill or a bow drill, or you're doing it like this, igniting some punk wood, then you can take that tiny little ember that you created and you can make it grow and grow and grow. To find that powder, just start looking around in cracks and crannies and nooks inside of any white rot or soft punk wood snag. And you're gonna see all kinds of really cool architecture there that looks like caves in the Southwest United States, cave dwellings or things like that. But tucked in there, you're also gonna find this white powder. Sometimes it's kind of a reddish powder but as long as you've got that powder, it's probably going to work really, really well for you. The finer, the better. Now let's take a look at brown rot fungus, or what I call hard punk wood. This has a distinctive geometric pattern when you see it. And it is going to be much harder, more brittle than the white rot or the soft punk and it has very different characteristics. It's more difficult to light. It is much hotter burning and much slower burning. Unlike the soft punk, a given snag of the hard punk will tend to all be of a similar characteristic. You remember in the other one, we found all kinds of different types within that one snag, but here it's all going to tend to be much more uniform in its texture and its capabilities. You won't usually find a powder like you do in the soft punk, but if you look carefully once in a while, you'll find little bits of it. I'm gonna show you how to make effective use of these different types of punk wood. And I'm gonna be using a ferro rod, which I know a lot of you use. First, let's use some of this hard punk wood. Now, of course, this comes in many different grades. Actually, this is the most difficult to start specimen that I have ever found. Some people think that you can spark a ferro rod right onto this and it's going to start up. Now, that's not impossible. If you find a piece that's very, very light and airy, that can happen. But in general, this stuff is going to be a lot more difficult to start. Here is how not to do it because this stuff is so brittle. If you try to use it as its own base, it's just gonna fall apart. So as we often encounter when using a ferro steel, we need to think of a way to use our environment to hold our material in some way. I have a very soft substrate here. I'm gonna cheat and bring over a piece of cardboard and just be really careful with the way I spark to see if I can land some sparks right on there, full blast. Still, you can see it does not take. What use is this stuff then? Well, remember, if we can get this to take, it's going to burn with a high degree of heat. It's gonna give us essentially a coal to work with. We can use this to dry out a tinder bundle or to put into a wet fire set. I'm gonna show you a trick to get this stuff to ignite when you otherwise can't get it to go. It's not gonna actually work with this specimen, but watch what I'm doing here with my fingernail. You could do this with a knife or a stick. I'm creating a powder pit, and then I'm gonna spark into that powder pit. If I can get that going, then I'm gonna use the technique I'm gonna show you soon here of caving the ember in order to get this to actually start up for us. I'm gonna scrape a little ferrocinium and throw some sparks in there. See that black that's forming in the pit of dust? In most cases, your hard punk will take, that dust will take, and from there, you can use the caving technique. But in this case, I could go all day with this. This stuff is just really resistant to taking any kind of a spark. In most cases, you're gonna be able to light the hard punk wood either just with your ferrocinium rod or with using this dust pit technique and then using the caving. And what that's gonna do is give you this heat source, which is gonna be very long lasting and it will usually be self-sustaining. Again, this specimen is 
so difficult that it's not even self-sustaining. It only is going to stay lit if we keep blowing on it. But usually it will be self-sustaining, especially as it gains more and more thermal energy, more and more heat encased in your little cave that you're creating. This is the method to get fires started in very, very wet conditions. Now, all this being said, even this seemingly unusable hard punk wood is going to have a power for us. But in this case, we're going to have to combine it with some soft punk wood. Here I'm going to use a pretty low grade piece of soft punk wood. This is infected also with a green fungus that you may have seen out in the woods. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my unstartable hard punk wood and I'm going to set it right on top to create a little cave. And then I'm going to blow into that little crevice, that little cave there. I'm going to keep blowing, keep blowing. And then I'm going to put a little bit more of that hard underneath and keep blowing into that cave. See how that works? Again, the main thing I use this for is to dry out extremely wet tinder materials. You can imagine if we just keep adding more and more of these pieces of punk wood and blowing into there, we're creating a really extremely hot source of heat that will burn for hours. And this little chunk that I have in my hands probably has 10, 15 minutes of burn time. If I start to add some bigger chunks, I can easily keep things going for a long, long time. That's the main power of this kind of punk wood. You can see eventually it will actually ignite and we'll get flames going. So you're generating some good heat in there and that's gonna be a different kind of heat than we have with the softer punk wood. But the soft punk wood is to me really where it's at if I'm just trying to get a fire going. And I'm gonna show you some of the extreme power of this substance. Do you remember that piece of inner bark that we got off that tree? Well, we're gonna use some of this now and show you what it can do. Here we have the white rot. This is the soft punk wood. And this is that inner bark that we took. Now, this is where the real magic happens. I'm gonna hit this a few times with the ferro rod and you can see it takes, now, Look, it's not super hot. I can put my finger on it, but this is an awesome coal extender of a level of power equal to chaga, if you've ever used that. But of course, this kind of punk wood is much in abundance, where chaga can be very rare, and often we don't want to harvest it for those uses. This punk wood is perfect for being a coal extender. And it is difficult to put out. So I'm gonna demo this. Now this is gonna behave differently than that little piece of green punk wood, that green soft punk wood that we had before. Because this, this right there is the outer bark. So it's again, the soft punk wood, but it's a hard variety of it. And watch how quickly when I sandwich it in here, when I cave it, it's going to give us flames. It's not that it generates tons more heat, although it does because it's of a harder variety, but it also just has a lot more mass. And that's one of the great things about punk wood is we can get these large masses of coal extender, of ember. After using that piece for that cave demo, I put it underneath the soil here, stomp on it, and now I'm gonna step away, I'm gonna go gather a tinder bundle. And we're gonna see the staying power of this punk wood and how it just, even in a very low oxygen environment, can hold on to its fire making potential. At some point, I'll do a winter video with this. I've literally thrown these down into the snow, buried them under the snow, and come back a few minutes later 
and I can still start a fire with them. So really powerful stuff. The takeaways here are these two basic types of punk wood. There's going to be overlaps, my friends, because we're dealing with a lot of different species of fungi here and how they interact with different species of trees. But in general, you're going to divide them into those two types. And as you go out, you're going to know that they have these different properties. The soft punk wood is going to start easier. It's going to burn cooler. But like this piece, it's going to have incredible staying power and ability to stay lit, even in a super low oxygen environment. That hard punk wood is going to need a lot more oxygen. But if you give it that oxygen, it's going to burn really hot and it's going to have a long burn. So that I would be using to take a tinder bundle that's really, really wet and to dry it out and get it going. That's a lot of smoke. Whoa. Okay. How about some flames? There's obviously a lot more to learn about punk wood, but this should give you a primer and make you ready to go out into the woods, find some of your own and experiment with it. The more you experiment, the more you practice, the more comfortable you're going to get with it. And it's pretty magical. Share in the comments, my friends, what you know about punk wood, your tricks, your tips, and we can all learn from each other. Love to you all. Mm -hmm.